Welcome to our course Digital Design with Verilog. In today's class, we are going to continue our discussion on various combinational logic design. Specifically, we will focus on repel curry adder and carry Luca adder. So, this part of the slide was prepared from Manos book chapter 4. So, uh, finally, our objective is to develop a n bit full adder, uh, but we will start with uh, just developing a single bit adder first. Okay? So, think about we have two bits, right? So, you have x and y, these are all one bit, and you want to add them, right? So, you will get sum and then carry, and this is quite obvious. Uh, so, if you just add 0, 0, you will get 0, carry uh, 0, 0, 1, you will get 1, carry 0, 1, 0, you will get 1, carry 0, and 1, 1, you will get sum 0 carry 1 right so this is 2 basically so if i uh, uh, put this into a truth table it will look like this so this is the four possible values of x and y this is the corresponding sum and this is the carry and if you look into this uh, whenever there is a odd number of uh, 1 then you will output is 1 otherwise uh, 0 sum and carry is only 1 when both of the input is 1 right so, uh, if I try to uh, draw the diagram corresponding to this, so I can just uh, have a AND gate uh, which is x y which is your carry and these two case x y bar or y uh, x bar y. So, these two scenario x uh, x bar y and x y bar and this I have to do a OR and get the Simon carry. Right. So, this is uh, if I uh, go from the uh, truth table. Right. Uh, I can have a optimized design also instead of this uh, 3 gates for the sum 2 and gates and 1 or gate. What I can do? I can just look into this. This S is nothing but XOR. Right. This is basically XOR. So, instead of this 3 and, uh, and gates and OR gates, we are going to use one of the XOR for the sum. Right. So, this is what is happening uh, and this is called half adder. Okay. So, in this case we have only two single bit input and output is sum and carry and effectively I have uh, one XOR which will give me the sum and one AND gate which will give me the carry and this is my half adder. But our objective is be, uh, to develop a N bit adder. Right. So, once we try to add two n bit number let us take an example of 4 to 2 number of 4 bits 1 0 1 1 and 0 0 1 1. So, when you try to add so this 1 1 0 and there is a carry 1 and then if you add this 3 1 uh, this is actually 3. So, uh, sum will be 1 and there will be carry and then this 1 will be added to this 0. So, this is 1 out carry 0 and this is 1 and there is carry 0 right. So, what we understood here once we try to add multiple bits there is a carry input right because it may uh, the current bit uh, when you try to sum you have to look into what is the carry of the previous bit that has to be added also right. So, so instead of this half adder what we are interested in actually in the full adder where we can have also effectively you have three inputs uh, you have three inputs you have x and y 2 bits and there is a carry in you will get output sum and carry out right. So, if I have this I can probably add them in a chain to uh, do this operation that I have explained here right I can just add this uh, adder in a chain right. So, let us try to develop this uh, full adder and this is what is called full adder okay, which is effectively has 3 bit addi addition. Right. Uh, so, I can extend the truth table of the half adder uh, like this that if you have combination is 0, 0, your carry can be 0 or 1. So, you have two scenarios. Similarly, if your x y can be 0, 1, 1, 0 and 1, 1 in both case your carry can be 0 or 1, 0 or 1 or 0, 1. So, there are 8 possible scenarios and if you add them you will uh, end up getting this sum you can cross check and this is the carry. Right. So, if I try to explain so, if you add 3 1 the output is 1 1 right. So, this is sum 1 carry 1. If you try to add 0 1 1 your 
sum will be 0, carry will be 1 because this is 2, right? 2 is 1, 0. Similarly, if you try to do this 1, 0, 1, again it is, uh, it is uh, addition will be 2, so it is 1, 0, so the carry is 1, sum is 0 and so on. So, this way you can identify this truth table and if I try to put this, uh, try to minimize the circuit using Carnot map, I will put this value into a truth table where x is uh, my row are represented by x and columns are represented by yz and I will put this 4 1 into this truth table. So, this is 1 1 1 which is this value uh, and then this is 0 1 0 which is uh, this case right and then this is 1 0 0 1 0 0 is this uh, this scenario right and this one is 0 0 1 right. But unfortunately, we cannot club uh, this one together to optimize using Carnot map. So, if I try to implement this, I will have 4 mean term which represent these 4 ones right. So, this is x bar y bar z, this is x bar y z bar, this is x y bar z bar and this is x y z. Right? So, this 4 mean terms corresponding to 4 1 and then I have to make or. So, this will give my sum. Similarly, I can put this carry into this truth table and you can cross check. So, this will be this 4 1 and you can club like this right. You can club this one like this. So, your uh, you will get a sorter product term and it is x y x z and y z right. So, if you see this one this is x y this is y z and this is x z right. So, this is what you will get from here. So, I can represent this using a uh, circuit where each product term is represented by these 3 AND gates and followed by this OR gate to get the carry. So, this way I can uh, get the sum and carry independently and that will represent my 3 bit full atom. We will now look into uh, implement an efficient version of the full adder. Okay? So, if we look into this uh, expressions. So, let us take the sum first. So, we will take this 4 product term and what I will do? I will try to do this uh, common sub expression elimination that is what I talked about during multi level optimization. Right? So, what we can do here is uh, I can take these two product term and I can take z bar as common. So, what I am doing basically z bar into x y bar plus x bar y and then from this part I will take z as uh, common and then it is basically x y plus x bar y bar. So, this I can write z bar into x x or y this is x or get right and then I can take this is z and this is basically x naught which is complement of x or right. So, what I can do I can write this is x x bar y complement. Then I can see here this is z bar so, some of this is a then z a bar right. So, this is again an xor right. So, this is xor y xor z. So, effectively what I can see that uh, this is the common sub expression I am identifying between this the, the in the expression and I can represent my sum just using 3 xor 2 xor uh, where I can just do xor of x y followed by xor of z right. So, this will give me some. So, this is much more efficient implementation than this one right. So, where I can do a multi level optimization. Now, since uh, in this case your sum and carry depends on x y and z. So, this z or uh, carry in, but the way I develop this particular circuit here what I do I do this optimization independently, but since these two have the same input what I can do is effectively I can take is there any common sub expression among these two, uh, two output as well right. So, this I will explain and answer is yes right. So, what I can do I can take this C terms are like this. So, what I can do I can take this uh, x y the x y is this one this one is x y right this is x and y and these two term independently I can take that right. So, what I am doing is C equal to x y 
and this is x bar y z and then this is x y bar z right. So, then I can do what I can take z as common from here and then this is x bar y plus x y bar. So, this is nothing but xor right. So, what I am trying to say is you get z into x xor y and what we have seen that this x xor y is also there in sum. So, this is the kind of common sub expression among multiple output. So, this is again multi level optimizations for multiple output will help us to identify this. So, finally, what we are seeing that we effectively need one XOR gate which is effectively uh, this which will give you x, x, x bar y. You need this AND gate which will give you x y and in combination this is nothing but a half adder right. So, this is basically the half adder that we have developed. So, if you try to recollect this is the half adder right. So, you have one XOR gate and one AND gate. So, uh, this is implementing this XOR and then this this XY. So, next we have to do a uh, XOR with Z. So, then this is my XY bar and this is my Z. So, this is the next XOR this is implemented here and then you also have a AND gate with this XOR and Z right. So, this is the AND gate corresponding to this and finally, there is OR gate right. So, this is implemented here. And if you look into here, this is also a half adder, right. So, if I try to draw this full adder in terms of half adder, effectively I am basically using two half adder and a OR gate, right. So, we have a half adder which will take x and y and it will give me x, x bar y and x y that is the output of a half adder. Then I have one more half adder where I will give this and then z it will give me the sum ok. And then I have uh, one OR gate which will take this which is this x bar y into z and z uh, and this this z also right. So, this is my connections. So, this will take sorry this will take this x y and this one. So, this is my C out right. So, this is much more efficient implementation as compared to the previous one where we can uh, share the common sub expression of x or between these two ok. So, this is uh, the area optimized full adder. So, once we have developed this uh, one full adder which is has three input effectively there is one uh, A B and carry in I can just connect them in a chain to get the full adder implementation of multiple bits right. So, this is an implementation of a 4 bit adder right. So, so if you the numbers are there is a, a which is a 0, a 1, a 2 and a 3 and you have b which is b 0, b 1, b 2 and b 3. So, what I am doing? I am doing this say I am assuming there is a carry 0 which will be 0 effectively. So, I am making a full adder here right. So, this is this. So, initially this carry initial carry may be 0 or it may be 1 also and I am connecting a 0 and the b 0 the, the LSB of this two number to this full adder. So, this will give me the output as 0 the LSB of the output and the carry out which will go is the carry input corresponding to the next adder. So, then I am getting C 1 and then I am connecting C 1, A 1 and B 1 to the next full adder right A 1, B 1 and C 1. So, this will give me S 1 and carry 2, carry 2 will be uh, propagated to the next block and then I can add this with A 2 and B 2 right. So, A 2 and B 2 and carry 2. So, this will give me the sum 2 and carry 3 which will be propagated into the next block. Then I will add this carry 3 and A 3 and B 3 and I will get my S 3 and the carry out right. So, the carry out is the C 4 
So, this is how uh, this is for 4 bit if you have 16 bit you will have 16 such block in connected in a chain right. So, this is a binary adder implementation and this is called repel carry adder because the carry getting repelled into the blocks to the final output carry right. So, this is uh, the first full uh, the adder implementation that we have learned in this class. Let us look into the Verilog implementation. Once you know this architecture, the implementation in Verilog is quite simple because here there is this is a combination of block, right? There is no sequential thing involved, sequential registers or flip flops are involved, right? So, what I am doing here, I first create a module which is half adder that will effectively implement this, right? This, uh, this uh, half adder. So, it has input x and y and output sum and carry. So, I will get sum using the XOR of XY and carry as a AND of A and X and Y right. So, this way I just develop this module. To develop a full adder I have to add two half adder as I explained in the previous uh, slide. So, I have two half adder and there is a OR gate. So, once I develop this full adder it has input XYZ x y z is my input sum and carry is the output. So, what I am doing here I just rename this as d 1 ok. Um, so, this is sum 1 this is d 1 and this is I am um, denoting as d 2 ok. So, what I am doing I am just making the connections right. So, I just instantiate the first half adder this module here I give the name half adder 1 and here what I am doing I am giving the actual x and y as the input and output is sum 1 and d 1 right. So, this is my d 1. So, I will get this two as the output and in this second half adder what I need I need to give sum 1 this as input and z right. So, I give z. So, sum 1 and z is the input to this uh, next half adder this is my z and this sum 1 and the output is uh, sum and d 2. So, I will get the final sum from this block and d 2 is this intermediate value right which I have to do a OR uh, of this d 1 and this d 2 right. So, this is what I have done and I get the carry output c. So, this is effectively uh, implementing my this full adder right. So, now for this 4 bit adder what I have to do I I have this two 4 bit number a and b which is 4 bit number and there is a carry in c 0 my output is 4 bit sum and there is a carry out which is c 4 and there are that intermediate internal carry propagation is c 1 c 2 and c 3. So, what I am effectively doing I am, I am just instantiating this full adder module 4 times here right and I am making the connection so that it forms the chain as I explained in the previous first full adder I have giving a 0 b 0 and the carry in the input carry c 0. So, it is up output is s 0 s 0 is the out uh, one of the s is my output and so this is the 0 th bit of the output and then this c 1 is getting propagated to the next block uh, and then it will produce uh, and I am giving a 1 and b 1 the way I explained. So, it will produce c 2 this will go as the input to the next one and it will produce S2 and C3, C3 will go to the propagate to the next block and I will get S3 right. So, exactly what uh, this diagram talks about. So, once you know the architecture implementation in Verilog is very straightforward you have to just encode your architecture in the syntax of Verilog right. So, this is my implementation of the 4 bit full adder right. So, if I want to develop a 16 bit I have to make some 16 instantiation in the similar manner that is all. So, uh, also once I implement I have to make sure that I uh, my implementation working correctly. So, for that you have to write the test bench. Uh, this is the test standard test bench format I am using for the entire code. So, initially I just uh, instantiate this 4 adder uh, module as the DOT and I am connecting A and B as the input and C in and my output will be sum and C out. So, what I am going to do I am going to give various values of A and B in this I am giving effectively 10 such different values here and uh, and also the carry in random values 
and I will just see the output whether it is a, I am going to monitor the output uh, for each such value change. So, monitor how it will do it will effectively whenever any of this value a b a b c in uh, will change uh, it will basically uh, show the it will print the corresponding values of all these values right. So, uh, initially uh, your uh, clock was 0 and reset is 1. So, it is effectively I am resetting everything. So, here i is my only register. So, I am resetting that and after that uh, every uh, uh, clock. So, the clock is basically 10 cycle sorry 20 cycle every 10 it will flip. So, every 20 cycle after every 20 unit of time I am just increasing my i and I am re re reading the random value corresponding to a, b and c which is within uh, 4 bit right. So, I get some random number and making sure that the value will be 0 to 15 right and c in should be within 0 or 1 binary. And then since this a and b and c in the input corresponding to this adder uh, automatically this calculation will happen in the uh, adder module and the corresponding sum and carry will be reflected at the output right. This is how the uh, simulation works. So, if you see the random values uh, some of the values. So, we can see in every 20 uh, unit of time the value changes right because I give 20 as the uh, every 20 unit I am changing the value of a and b right. So, for example, if you see a equal to 4, b equal to 1 and c in equal to 1. So, 4 plus 1, 5 plus 1, 6. So, output is 6 and our, there is no carry out. If you take some random one say for example, if you take this one which is 6 and this is 5 and this is 0. So, it is 11 right. So, this is 11 and there is no carry out. If you take this one um, which is 13 this is also 13. So, 26 plus 1 27 right. So, it will result in uh, 11 and carry out will be this right. So, 27 if you try to write here it is 10111 right. So, 16 plus 8 24 and 327. So, this is my carry out and this is my sum right this is what I am getting here. So, this way you can cross check that uh, every possible different random value of a and b and c in I am getting the output and you can cross check these values are actually correct ok. So, this way I am confident that my implementation of the Verilog is correct and it is actually performing the 4 bit addition. Let us try to now uh, explain the area overhead corresponding to this ripple carry adder. What is the overall delay? right. So, delay is what is the time it takes right to produce the output. So, the primary bottleneck of this kind of implementation is that there is a combination of path starting from this going through this to this right. So, what is the delay of this full adder? One full adder is 3 unit of time right. If you look into this full adder there is a path starting from there is one path like this, but there is a path like this right. So, this is delay of 3 gates this is the maximum path right. If I assume that one gate delay is 1 unit. Uh, so, then this is 3, 3 unit of delay right 1 particular uh, full adder. Now, if you see here I am connecting 4 such right. So, this has 3 unit of delay this is 3, this is 3 and this is 3. So, this is 4 into 3 right. If there are n bit addition it is 3 into n. Right. So, this is the kind of total delay. What does this mean? So, you have to make sure that your clock this should be long enough to do this 3 n accommodate this 3 n delay right. You have to make sure that you should give the next input by the time your C out is computed. So, that means the delay is quite high here right. If you take this uh, op unoptimized implementation the delay is because these are two independent so all path having uh, one AND gate, one OR gate. So, the delay is 2. So, in this case in this version of implementation the overall delay will be 2 N for N bit full adder. So, whether it is a 2 N or 3 N overall it is a quite big number. If your N is say say 16 bit, so this is 48 unit right and if one of the AND gate is taking say 1 nanosecond this is 40 nanosecond right. So, that means your clock period should be at least 40 nanosecond. So, you have to give something like 50 nanosecond clock right. So, which is uh, quite long. Now, you think about uh, if it is 64 bit it is uh, 64 into 3. So, the this will be 64 into 3 which is 192 right. So, that means your 
clock period will be something like 200 nanosecond, then only this will work, right. So, that the delay is quite high and it is not fast, right. So, that is one of the bottleneck of this ripple carry adder. So, what is the uh, way ahead? So, we should try to develop some uh, adder which can overcome this ripple effect of the carry. If I can compute this uh, carry uh, independently without waiting for the previous block, then I do not have to do this 3n, then my delay will be fixed, right, whether it is maybe 3, 4 or 2, whatever it is, but it is fixed, right, it does not depend on the size of the input, right, and that is what is called carry look ahead adder, right. So, where we do is we uh, look ahead and compute the carry without waiting for the previous input, right, or previous block. So, let us explain how this uh, the logic of carry look ahead works. So, if you look into this full adder implementation that I have developed in the previous ripple carry adder, we have this true half adder and there is a OR gate, right. Now, let us see the logic. So, this uh, when your carry will be output will be 1. So, you have input x and y and this z or carry in, right. If both of them is 1, right. If x and y is 1, definitely there will be carry out because if 1 and plus 1 is 2, right, there will be definitely carry out without looking into the value of the input carry, right. So, this AND gate effectively doing this, right, that this is my x and this is y. So, this is actually doing this x and y, right. So, it, if this is 1, that means both of the x and y is 1, right. So, in this case, if you see here, this is a OR gate and output will be automatically 1. I do not need to look into this, right, because I am making sure that I uh, both of the x and y is 1. So, my output is uh, my carry out will be always 1. So, this AND is called carry generator, right. If both of the one, uh, input a x and y is 1, I my carry will be definitely 1, right. So, this is called carry generator. On the other hand, if you look into this output, right, this is x, x or y, right, this is x and this is y. So, this will be 1 whenever it is 0, 1 or 1, 0, right. So, if uh, you are adding 0, 1, output will be 1 or if you are adding 1 or 0, output will be 1 and the carry is 0 for this case, right. But it is making sure that in this case, whatever the value of c, that will be propagated in here right, because if you see this particular AND gate, right, here this this is coming here and this is the input carry. So, I am if, if it is 0 1 or 1 0, I am the out this output is 1. So, now the output of AND gate will equivalent to C i, right, because if it is 1 output will be 1, if it is 0 output will be 0, right. So, this means this p actually propagates this carry to the output, right. So, this will come here and whatever the value come, if 1 comes here, it will it will output will be 1 and if it is 0, output will be 0 because this is already 0, because it is 0, 1 or 1, 0, this AND gate will always produce 0, right. So, if I look into this particular half or half adder, the output has significance, right. 1, this AND gate is the carry generator. It means that if both of them is 1, definitely my output will be 1, carry output will be 1. And if this is 1, that means the input is x, x and y is 0, 1 or 1, 0. So, it will now propagate the carry to the output, right. So, that is why we rename this as carry propagator and carry generator. Now, you think about there are 4 such block and their input is a i b i, right, a 0 b 0, next one is a 1 b 1, then a 2 b 2 and a 3 b 3. So, this propagation P i, P 1, P 2, G 1, G 2, uh, P 3, uh, uh, this P 1, G 1, P 2, G 2 and P 3, G 3 that can be computed independently because for this there is no carry dependency, right. I can co compute them for all, all bits independently, okay. Now, if I can represent my carries in terms of this P i and G i, then I do not need to uh, depend on the previous block, right, and that is possible, okay. So, let me explain that. So, what I am saying here is that your p i i in g i 
which is the output of the half adder which is nothing but XOR and AND, right. Why I am using the I? It depends on the bit, right. If it is uh, you have basically say A0, A1, A2 and A3 and B0, B1, B2 and B3. So, I am talking about this is one full adder, this is one full adder, this is one full adder and this one, this is basically AI and BI corresponding to this, okay. So, I can represent my PI and GI either XOR and AND, okay. And then what is this SUM, SUM I which is basically PI, XOR, CI because the CI is coming here, right. This is PI, XOR, CI. Whereas, my CI plus 1 is uh, this is GI and here I am giving CI and PI, right. So, this is PI, this is PI and CI and this is my GI. So, this is effectively PI, CI or GI, right, because it is the OR gate. So, I can represent my uh, CI plus 1 which will propagate to the next block CI plus 1 as GI plus PI and CI. Okay, and sum as P i C i. Still now, uh, so uh, I have input carry C 0. So, C 1 is I can represent from this as G 0, P 0 plus C 0, right, because this is how I will get from here. So, here everything is known to me because G 0, P 0 I will get from this half adder and C 0 is an input. Now, think about C 2, right. So, I have carry, uh, you have this uh, full adder, right. So, here this is C 0 is coming here, this is C 1, C 2 is going here and this is C 3. So, I am interested to compute this without uh, C 3 without depending on C 2 or C 2 without depending on C 1 and so on, right. I can want to calculate this C 3, C 2, C 1 and C 0 parallelly, okay. So, I can write this C 2 from this general expression like this, right, G 1 plus P 1 plus C 1. Now, C 1 value is known to me. So, I can replace this C 1 by this expression and I will get this, right. So, now in the look into this expression, I have G 1, P 1, G 0, P 1, P 0, G C 0. These are all I can compute parallelly, right, because these are all just the output of the half adders and C 0 is the carrying. So, it is now not dependent on C 1. I can compute directly, right. Similarly, C 3 also, C 3 I can rewrite from this equation that G 2 plus P 2 plus C 2 and I will replace this value of C 2 from this and I will end up getting this, okay, which is G 2 P 2 G 1 plus P 1 P 2 G 0 and P 2 P 1 P 0 C 0. Again you look into this, these are all P G which is the propagator and generator and carry input 0. So, this does not depend on C 2. What I can do now, I can write, I can calculate this C 1, C 2, C 3 parallelly without waiting for the previous one. Right. So, this is what the implementation. So, if I take this expression, I just put into the circuit, this is my C 1, this is C 2 and this is C 3 and this is just nothing but implementing this expression, right. You can cross check. So, you will, you, you can see that and this is the half adder 1, so these are the half adders, right. These are the half adders where you give A 0, B 0, A 0, B 0, right. This is the half adder. You will give here a 1, B 1, this is the half adder, another half adder, then you will give A 2, B 2, this is another half adder, right. And you will get this, uh, this is nothing but X or an add, right. So, this all can run parallel. Now, these values are coming here and I am computing this expression directly, right. So, there is no path like this, right, there is no path like this. I am calculating this C 1 only depends on the input A 0, B 0 all this A i s, right. I am calculating C 2 only depends on A, the all the A i s and C 0, right. So, this way I can calculate, I look ahead and calculate the carries uh, directly from the inputs. Once I calculate this, uh, I can develop a new adder like this which implement again 4 bit full adder, right. So, as I mentioned this is the half adders, 4 half adders, right. These are the 4 half adders and then I uh, put this into this carry generator, right, carry look ahead generator which is nothing but this circuit, right. So, this circuit is taking this C 0, P 0, P 0, G 0, P 1, G 1, P 2, G 2 
and producing C1, C2, C3, right. So, this is what I am doing and this implement nothing but this expressions, right, this expression is implemented. And then once you get this, your sum is, if you go back, your sum is, uh, you have to put a XOR to get the sum, right. This is what uh, I am doing here. So, I just put this XOR to get the sum. So, I will get, I will give C0 and P0, I will do XOR, I will get S0, I will give C1 and P1, P1 is coming from here, right. So, this is the same P1, right. It is the same P1 coming here through this right. So, this is your P 1 and it is coming like this to this ok. Similarly, the C 2 and P 2 I will get S 2, C 3 and P 3 I will get S 3. So, now you can think about I have this is one level of gates, in this I have two level of gates right. This is one level of gate and this is two level of gates, the I have two level of gates here and this is another level of gates. So, there are four level of gates here. So, any path here maximum delay is 4, right. So, the overall this is a constant time, it is not 3 and anymore. So, this is 4 bit error, but the delay is constant 4 because there are 4 level of uh, gates, right. So, this is the carry look ahead adder, right. So, this is the overcome the problem of the repel carry adder where the carry was propagated through the uh, bits and it take the overall delay of the circuit is quite high. So, this is being overcome here, ok. So, implementation is uh, quite simple. So, I just have the same full adder because I, I need the full adder. So, I uh, create this module and then I create a module for this carry look ahead generator. So, this is my carry generator module where I will give all this P0, P1, P2, P3, G0, G1, G0, G3 and it will produce and carry in and it will produce C1, C2, C3, C4, right. So, and this is nothing but the equation that I have obtained. Uh, previously. So, what I did I just rewrite this uh, expression in terms of uh, very log format right that is all. So, it will give me this caddies and now this is my caddy look ahead adder where my input is uh, 4 bits and what I am doing here I instantiate 4 half adder as per my requirement these are the 4 half adder and I am connecting those uh, a 0 b 0 to the first adder then a 1 b to the next half adder then the a 1 a 2 b 2 to the third half adder and a 3 b 3 to the fourth half adder right and it will give me this uh, p 0 g 0 right p i g i correspondingly and those p i g i are now put as the input to this carry uh, generator this module and it will give me this c 1 c 2 c 3 c 4 right and then the sum are calculated. So, this is nothing but this level of XOR gets right. So, this I just do a p 0 into XOR c 0 p 1 XOR c 1 and so on and my C out is C 4. So, this is my very log implementation corresponding to the carry look ahead adder. So, once you simulate this, so here I have instantiated this uh, carry look ahead adder and uh, so this part is that clock generator thing, but effectively again I am doing things like that I am randomly generating this AF, AB value and carry in value same as like full adder. So, this is the same test case I can Inst uh, when I can run only just change I just replace this 4 bit full uh, ripple carry adder by this carry look ahead adder. I have instantiated this now ok. And if you look into this values the values are coming correctly right. For example, here it is 1 to 0 1 this is 1 to 0 1 which is 13 this is 13 this is 1. So, output will be 27 which is 1 0 1 1 1. So, this is my output and this is carry out right. So, this way you can cross check all the values are coming correctly. So, this is rightly implementation addition only difference between this versus the previous one is this is much faster ok. So, uh, one thing we have to accept that uh, we, we make it faster with the cost of the additional resources right. So, let us try to compare the kind of resource I need to implement a 4 bit um, 4 bit full adder repeal carry adder versus 4 bit carry look ahead adder. We now will discuss the area overhead of the carry look ahead adder. So, we have already seen that this carry look ahead adder is very fast because it is a constant delay of 4 uh, whereas, the repeal carry adder is slower because this each bit is kind of connected in a chain and its delay is always uh, order of uh, 3 n right. So, but this kind of uh, fast or the speed is not come for free right. So, it, it comes with a cost of additional area. 
So, we'll now we'll discuss what is the kind of area overhead of this carry lookout adder over ripple carry adder. So, if you look into this uh, carry generator that is the place where it takes a lot of area. If you look into this design that I have explained in the previous slide that you have this carry 1 is generated where I just connected this P0 and Z0 right. So, is C0 and P0 is connected here. So, you will it will be generated by these equations right. So, uh, and for C1 I need 2 AND gate for C3 I need 3 AND gate and so on. So, now if you think about the modern day computer where there are 64 bit word. So, you will have for the C63 you will have a one AND gate of two, 2 inputs then there will be another AND gate of 3 inputs then 4 inputs 5 inputs till 63 inputs. So, there will be an AND gate of 63 input as well and you remember this uh, AND gate of 2 input versus AND gate of 63 is not to the same area it will take more area obviously right. And similarly in the next level you have this OR gate right and this OR gate also the number of input is growing right of C1 has 2 inputs, C2 has th 3 inputs, C3 has 4 inputs and so on. So, then 60, 63 will have 64 inputs right. So, this is a very area hungry design ok. So, let us take this say I want to develop a th 32 bit adder and I want to see the overall area of this ripple carry adder 32 bit versus carry look adder of 32 bit. So, uh, if you recollect this ripple carry adder it has uh, this is one block right. So, in which uh, this kind of block will be connected in chain right there will be 32 such blocks uh, this is that one block and this is the one block and here the A0 B0 will be there here A1 B1 here A2 B2 and so on right till A31 to B31 right. So, and then be connected in a chain. So, if you look into this area it has 5 gates right. And so, if there are say 32 such blocks, so 5 into 32, which is 160 gates. So, here the area I will compute in terms of number of 2 input gates you have. I am assuming roughly all the gates of uh, 2 inputs require similar area. This is just the rough estimations. Whereas, what is the delay? So, uh, we have discussed that this 1 unit. Uh, uh, one uh, block has 3 unit of delay because this is the path of 3 unit delay. So, this is 3. So, 3 into 32 which is 96 right. So, this is the unit of delay. So, this can be some nanosecond 1 nano I am just assuming that 1 gate is a kind of 1 nanosecond right. So, something like this. So, this is the overall area versus delay value corresponding to the 32 bit ripple carry adder. Now, if you look into this uh, 32 bit carry look at adder, first thing I will try to explain that uh, suppose you have a 4 input AND gate right. To implement this using 2 input AND gate whatever way you want to make it will take 3 uh, 2 input AND gate right. So, this can be one way of connecting this right or you can connect it them in chain. And so, on. so but you need three, right? So what I'm trying to say is that uh, the cost of uh, n input input gate, whatever it get is, is kind of n minus one to two input gate, right? So uh, and this is how I'm going to calculate. So now let us try to see this. Uh, 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 this uh, carry look at adder. So, we have such uh, 32 half adder each of them has 2 2 gates and there is one more uh, XOR at the output which will compute your sum 0. So, it is kind of 3 gate corresponding to each bit. So, it is kind of 3 into 32 right. So, which is 96 for additional things. The in addition to this gates I need uh, the gate corresponding to this. So, this let us me calculate roughly. So, here if you see for each bit I have 1 2 input AND gate right. So, this way if you get go to till 32 you will get one more AND gate of 2 input. So, there will be 31 because C0 does not have. So, uh, kind of 31 1 input gate I am assuming that it cost is 1 unit right plus uh, there will be 3 input gate 
will be starting from C2, it will go till 32. So, there will be 30 such 3 input gate and uh, to implement a 3 input gate, we need 2, 2 input gates, right. So, I will just cost, I will assume 2. Similarly, there will be 4 input gate, there will be 29, right, 29 4 input gates because it will go till 32 and cost is 3, right, because uh, 1 4 input gate can be implemented using 3 2 input gates and so on. So, this way this will continue till uh, I will have 1 31 input gate, right. So, this is the kind of total number of 2 input gate I need to get and get you need here, right. In addition to that, you also have this x uh, or gate, right, and how many or gate? So, there is 1 3 input gate whose cost is 2 there is one 4 input or gate whose cost is 3. So, this way I have also one 32 input gate whose cost is 31. So, if you do the summation here, so this will come 31 into 30 by 2 which is uh, 15 into 31 by 2 which is 465. Okay. And if you do this summation, this will come roughly around 6500. It is not exactly same, but there is a uh, arithmetic series you can find it out. And we also have seen that 96 gates are for the half adder and the XOR gate. So, if you add this uh, all values, it is coming around 7000. Sorry, this is this will come around 6000. Okay. So, overall it will come around 6500. This is roughly number of two input gates are there in a 32 bit carry look at adder. So, you can see it is a huge number, right. So, if I just try to write here. Uh, for 32 bit uh, ripple carry adder uh, area of is kind of 160 delay is 96 delay is too high whereas in a 32 bit carry look carry adder you have around 6500 gates uh, and delay is 4 which is very uh, there is a significant improvement in the timing but there is a huge overhead in terms of area clearly this uh, 64 will be there is a huge number of gates right so this is not something always acceptable in your uh, target design. So, the compromise is, uh, is solution is kind of uh, you can combine this carry look ahead concept with refill carry concept, right. So, you have 32 bit uh, uh, value instead of making a carry look ahead of 32 bit, what you can do? You can create uh, a carry look ahead adder of 4 bits, right and 8 such carry look ahead adder of 4 bits can be uh, connected in a chain like ripple carry adder, right. So, this is fast, this each of them will be fast and they will be connected like this, but there is a chain, right. So, here what I am going to give, I am going to give the first 4 bits, right, A 0 to 3, then B 0 to 3, here I will give from uh, 4 to 7. 4 to 7 a and b and so on. Here I will give the MSB one, right. So, 27 to 31 a and b 27 to 31. So, 4 bit carry look at error which will cost will not be that high and uh, I will connect them in a chain. So, it will be not as fast as the uh, carry look at error, but the area will be much more uh, in manageable range. On the other hand, the speed is also good enough. Okay. So, let us see what is the overhead, uh, overhead when I am going to take this kind of 4 bit. right? So, if you take this 4 bit, if I come back here, the cost will be here is uh, exactly this is the 4 bit. right? So, you have uh, 1, 2, 3, uh, 1 input, uh, 2 input get, 2, 2 uh, 3 input get and 1, 4 input get. Right? So, this is the overall cost of this. So, this is 3 plus 4 uh, equal to 10 and the OR gate will be 3. So, which is 1 plus 2 plus 3 which is 6 and in addition to that you have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, so, around uh, 8 plus 12, 12 gates are there right plus 12. So, it is around 28 gates right. Uh, overall uh, number of gates used is 28 in one of the block right and now you have uh, 8 such blocks. So, 8 28 into 8 which is 256. So, this many gets you need right. 
So, you have effectively there are 8 such block each of them has 28 gates. So, 8 into is basically 224 gates. Okay. On the hand the delay uh, within this block is 4 and there are 8 such block which is 4 into 8 which is 32. Right. So, if I come back to the table now I have overall area is 224 and uh, delay is 32. So, you can see here that uh, my speed up is if you uh, consider this uh, uh, area uh, compared to the ripple carry adder. So, I have uh, 3x faster right. So, the my this uh, this particular version of my design is 3x faster, but area over it is 1.4x which is good right. So, with, with kind of one and a half times uh, more uh, area I am getting three times faster design which is uh, good. On the other hand, if you see here this uh, uh, from uh, 224 to this it is basically 19 uh, less area right. So, so, now if you compare with the carry look at adder here the area is this and this is my area. So, it is basically I need uh, 29x uh, less area whereas, my speed uh, variation is now 8x only. So, you can ac actually accept that your area is 29 times less, but speed is only 8 times getting slower, it is not 29 times slower. right? So, this kind of a mixed design of this carry look at and reveal carry adder is useful in practice. There are many other kind of adders available like carry select adder, carry save adder, carry skip adder, uh, conditional sum adder, mirror adder, square root adder, but in the interest of time of this course we will not able to complete. So, interested reader can uh, read this in offline mode. So, with this we conclude the discussion on adders. Thank you. Mm -hmm.